Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today we're going to look at firing up an outboard for the first time that hasn't been run in many years. This Evinrude 150 two-stroke has been sitting around for about five years. It's recently been purchased by a friend of mine and it's not been started in all that time. He bought it sort of uh, sight unseen because the price was so good, which is fine. I still think he got a great deal even if this motor doesn't run at all. But word is that last time it was used, it did run fine. Having said that, five years is a long time for an outboard to sit around. Same goes for cars, anything. They really do like to be used. So we'll start, I think, with just a bit of a visual inspection. I think it's the obvious place to begin. We'll get the cowling off and we'll just sort of run an eye over it all and see if anything obvious jumps out. First indications are pretty good. It certainly looks pretty tidy under the cowling. No obvious corrosion problems or anything. I don't know, maybe I'm just used to river boats that are always corroded, but this looks pretty good to me. I have noticed though the washer spacer behind the prop nut has been tightened and it looks like it's fractured in about three places. So I'll definitely order one of those and we'll replace that. What I'm going to do now is pop all the spark plugs out and just have a look what condition they're in. When I take these plugs out, I'm going to keep them in order. So if there is anything strange going on, then I know which cylinder the spark plug went with. I'm not particularly worried about the condition of the plug itself. I'm more seeing if that indicates a problem with water in the cylinder or anything like that. So far so good. So as I take them out, just laying them down in a position that relates to their cylinders. So top to bottom, starboard bank, and then I'll do the same for the top to bottom on the port bank. Here are our spark plugs all in order, and I'm not seeing anything particularly bad going on, which is good. A little bit of corrosion on the outside of this bottom spark plug, but that's very common with outboards and nothing to really worry about. So, so far so good. The next thing I'm going to do is spray a bit of oil into the cylinders now the spark plugs are out. There I'm just looking to provide a little bit of startup lubrication so it doesn't start up dry so all the fuel comes through. If it was a four stroke I'd pretty much do the same thing but I'd also be looking at draining the sump oil, changing the oil filter etc but obviously we don't have that with this two stroke. To do this I'm going to use a spray bottle, it's a refillable sort of pump pack of WD-40. Obviously two stroke oil is another good choice, this is just what I've got in a pack here and given WD-40's main ingredient is fish oil I think, so I think it'll be fine. If I had easier access to the nut on the top of the crankshaft I'd probably be inclined just to try and turn it over a little bit by hand and get a sense about whether it's seized. Unfortunately because all the timing gear is on top that's not so easily done here, so I'm going to just put it in gear take the keys out of the ignition, the spark plugs are out so I'm not worried about it starting and then just see if I can turn the prop a little bit and get a sense of whether the motor's seized. The gear selector is now in forward, spark plugs are still out, a bit of oil in the, in the cylinders, just going to pop some gloves on and just see if the prop turns. So this prop's now turning as though it's still in neutral. So it looks like we might have a gear selector problem. I'll just go and uh, have a look at the linkages and see, uh, see if I can figure out what's going on there. Seems to have gone into reverse. So we know our cables are all connected. I'll um, just try it in forward again now. Hmm, still no luck there. All right, so there's a bit of an issue there. What I might do now is move on and just drain the gearbox oil because if it looks good, I won't drain it all. I'm not going to do a gearbox change. I'm not looking really to service this motor. I'm just looking for signs of things that means that it's not going to run well, not going to start up or do more damage if we try and run it. So I'll just crack it, have a look at the oil, see what condition it's in. I've just cut the bottom off a water bottle just to use it to make it easy to see the clarity or the colour of the oil. I'm going to get a pick and clean the drain plug. It's been anti-fouled over, so I don't want to strip the slot on the screw. That's pretty stuck. I'm going to go get an impact screwdriver. With an impact screwdriver, you just pop it in and you have to preload it in the direction you want it to turn. Ah, 
that screw is seriously stuck. Welcome to the wonderful world of old outboards. Ah, it's turning. We made it. I was a bit worried then. Yeah, this oil is a bit emulsified. I'm gonna get a proper pan and drain it all. So this is what it looks like. Sort of a milky color. As this continues to drain, the oil is actually getting a little bit darker. So it looks like over the years, there's been a little bit of water sitting in the bottom of the gearbox, where the rest of the higher oils, black, but, but not emulsified. So maybe not quite as bad as I thought. Gearbox is almost finished draining now, just the last few drops. So I'm gonna put the plugs back in so I don't make a mess and take it over to the bench and have a look what's going on with this gear selector. In order to get the gearbox off, I now need to disconnect the gear selector linkage and that's done underneath the bottom carburetor here. So to get to that, I'm gonna take this lower cowling off. It's got some 10 millimeter bolts. There's uh, one at the back here one at the front and it's sort of a much harder to see one just under here. So three on that side and then it'll pull away. I'm also going to undo the Phillips head screw here because I'm going to disconnect the shift cable and the throttle cable as well. You'll see under here we've got this long gear selector linkage and then it goes to this R clip. So I'm just going to use some pliers and pull that R clip up. And that then allows that cable to slide along its length. If you undo these little bungee cords, you can pull this air box away as well. With the air box out of the way, you can see down in here, this is the end of that rod. If I push it across, that pin slides out and that's what will allow us to pull the gearbox off and have that, that uh, shift linkage rod go down. The bolts on this gearbox, uh, I'm using a 14 millimeter spanner. To get the trim tab off, I'm using an 11 millimeter, but I presume it's some old Imperial style measurement in reality. Also with these trim tabs, it's good to mark them so you know what position they're in. In this case, this one's just in the dead straight position, so that's where I'll put it back. But if you put a bit of a scratch on it, or a bit of paint pen or something, you'll know where to get it back on when you're reassembling. There's also a couple of Phillips heads that seem to locate this trim tab and they're also stuck. So I'm gonna get the prop off to give myself better access to get those out. For this prop nut, I'm gonna use a 27 mil socket. And there are these bits of this spacer washer that was behind it. Probably nearing the end of its life. In here it's pretty crusty, so we'll see how easily this prop comes off. I think I'm definitely going to need to get a puller onto it. I'll give it a bit of a spray around here with some oil. Not that I think it's going to penetrate very far, but it always feels like it should help. Oh, a few taps got it off anyway, that's all right. I don't strictly need to get this thrust washer off to, I've got access to these screws now, but I wouldn't mind seeing the oil seals, checking for fishing line, that kind of thing, we've come this far. Straight away, when you're looking at the oil seal on this one, you can see the spring's broken. It's just flopping around in there. So that front oil, that outside oil seal is not gonna be doing much good. Tiny bit of fishing line, but not much. So I'm gonna fish that oil seal out and see if we can get a new one. You know, I've decided against that for now. What I'm gonna do is just pop a big O-ring. Into this oil seal to replace the spring for now. Probably easier said than done, but we'll give it a go. We've now got an O-ring here, sitting inside the oil seal here, which is where the spring was. Now, 
This is by no means a permanent fix, but I'll just pop it in for now so I can put some oil in it because the purpose of this exercise is to see if this motor runs. There's no point spending a whole lot of time and money on a gearbox when the engine's not even going to start. So I'm going to add it to the list of issues that need fixing properly down the track and we'll push on trying to see if this engine runs. Now I've got better access to these Phillips heads. I'm going to see if I can get them out with the impact driver. Neither of these screws are coming out even with the impact driver. I could try a bit of heat, but to be honest with you, I think I'm just going to drill them out. I'll try a bit of heat first. See, this is the joy of outboards. You can imagine someone coming into a shop and saying, why did it take an hour to change my trim tilt anode? Surely it's a five minute job. This is why. This one's spinning, but not coming out. This one's not even turning. I'm gonna drill them. 99% of outboards don't even have these two little screws. They just have the center bolt. There we go. So I took the head this one off and the, it's just kind of a little indent that the screw locks into on this. So once one was out, I could actually pull the other one out. So you only need to drill one really. So when I put it back in, I'll actually hook it back under that remaining screw and put the bolt in. I'm happy with that. When you take the trim tab off, you've got access to this other bolt here. So you need to take this one off and this one off to get the leg off, to get the gearbox off. This one here is just for the anode, so you can leave that one in place. Just trimming this up so I can pull the gearbox out. Uh, just got one bolt left in it, so I'll take that one out now. All right, there we go gearbox on the bench now. We can see this is in forward gear because on these Evan Roods lifting this selecting rod up goes into forward and you can see there's a bit of a shiny patch on the bottom here so obviously it's in its raised position. And also if I turn the prop clockwise the drive shaft turns clockwise. Now what I'm going to do is try and push this down whilst turning the prop, just so the dog clutch engages, see if we can get it into neutral. Now I couldn't get it into forward gear in the boat, but it's clearly in forward gear now. So it may have just needed to be shifted between the gears a little bit to free up, we'll have a look. But if I can get it shifting between the gears here nicely, then I'm happy to put it back on the boat. But while I'm here, I'd be nuts not to look at the impeller, half the efforts, well, actually, <laughs> 80% of the effort's taking the gearbox off, so I may as well check what condition that's in while I'm here. To make shifting this a little bit easier, I'm just gonna find a little pin that I can put through the eye at the top of the selector to give myself a bit of a handle to pull down with it. Here's a punch that just fits through that eye, so this'll do. I just lifted this jacket up and a whole lot of corrosion came out from above this oil seal. So I don't think this is in great condition. I'm worried about doing more harm than good, but I'm going to take this plate off, see if I can get the bolts out, see if I can get the plate off without it breaking, and see if we can clean this up a little bit. These bolts are all 11 mil or the Imperial equivalent, and that includes the water pump. So I'll just undo them all while I'm here. I'm going to use my pry bar to try and lift this up. Ah, there we go. It was much easier than I thought it was going to be. And interestingly, this actually seems quite seized around this oil seal. So that's it's kind of good because I think that's going to be reasonably easy to fix. It's moving 
below the plate, but the plate and the rod are moving as one unit, they're stuck together. Start by just putting a bit of WD-40 on that C section, we'll just let it soak for a little bit. While that soaks, I'll just go and have a look at the rest of the outboard. While that gearbox soaks, I'll show you the next thing that I've found wrong with this. And that is, trim tilt motor works. Until it gets to the trim ram. So the tilt ram works fine, but the trim rams are C. So I'll tilt it up again and I'll show you what they look like. You can see here, what used to be the seal around the ram is actually just kind of bits of rubber <laughs> sticking out amongst some corrosion. So these rams just aren't moving at all. What I need to see now is whether we can get these end caps off and get some new seals in there. One thing we can do is just put some more weight on, literally like stand on the leg and see if we can get them to move. Once they move, they'll probably lubricate a little bit because once again, you know, we're not looking to spend a fortune till we know this motor's a going concern. But I've also got real concerns about whether these are gonna to be too corroded to get them off. It's quite a big surface area to break using a little face spanner. So what I might do is tilt it down, stand on it, try to tilt it down further, see if we can get those to free up. Before I do that though, I will spray some lubricant around those. Probably just a little bit of silicon spray, something that's quite rubber friendly. This side you can see, is, although it's not in great condition, there is a rubber seal still in place. And if you tap this with a hammer, you see it bounce a, a fraction of a millimetre just against the oil, so you know it's not locked up. This side, there's a big chunk here where there's no seal at all. And inside here is just that salt aluminium corrosion. Then elsewhere, the seal's blown out completely. So I think this is the side that's completely locked up. I'm gonna try and clean it up, see if I can free it up. But then we're gonna have to definitely get this end cap off in order to replace that seal. So I'll see if I can get it moving to start with and then I'm gonna put the face spanner in and see if we can wind this up. I don't think, uh, I don't think either's gonna be easy given the level of corrosion here. With this uh, punch through the hole at the top of this shift rod, I can actually twist it slightly, which breaks the seal through here. Quite often it's easier to sort of break a seal by twisting it rather than pushing and pulling it. I'm gonna take this shift linkage rod out it's, a, it's threaded down into the bottom. So once again, I've just got this punch through the top here and then I'll wind it and I'll just count the winds out so I know I get it back in the same position. Oh, there we go, it's already out. So that was about five. I'll give you a quick look inside. So that's where the rod's screwed out from. I don't know how well that's gonna focus down there but you can definitely see a bit of that emulsified oil, so I'll give that a bit of a spray with brake cleaner and clean it out as well. Now what I'm gonna do is slide this cover plate off and replace the O-rings that are inside there, the seals. And I'm also gonna see if I can straighten that end up. I don't know how well, it look, to me that looks bent. I doubt that's how it is in the factory. I don't do a lot of Evinrude work, but that looks to me as though it's been damaged by putting it into gear while this is seized. So straighten that, get this off, replace the seals. All right, dodgy O-rings. I've got to say this probably isn't very straight either, so I'm just gonna roll it on the bench, see how bent it is and see if we can fix it up. This was supposed to be a short video on a handful of things to do before you start a motor up for the first time and it's gone off on a huge tangent, sorry about that. But, you know, it's all things to learn. Now, rolling this rod on the bench doesn't even work. It 
by the time you get it onto its edge, it lifts about five mil off the bench, so it definitely needs to be straightened. But I think we're putting it in a vise and bending it. It's kind of a bow in the middle and this end, and they're all in the same direction. I think it's definitely been caused by it being seized. What I'm gonna do here, hopefully you can see there, is there's a bit of an O-ring chewed up in there as well. So I'm gonna fish these O-rings out. There we go. So there's the second one. They're both pretty fat O-rings. I might have something suitable here actually rather than getting a an even rude part. So I'm gonna clean out the grooves the O-ring goes in, the O-rings go in, sorry there's two. Get some new O-rings that are suitable. Straighten the shift linkage and then clean out some of that emulsified oil from the gear selector mechanism. Put it back together and see if we can shift gears. Because I'm about to put a order into Evinrude for some other bits, I thought I'd have a quick look at the impeller just to see what condition it's in. And it doesn't look too bad. What I think I'll do, because I'm not really keen to spend money on this outboard until I know it's a runner, so that's certainly good enough for, for testing. I might clean the O-ring up, clean the base plate up a little bit, put a bit of rubber grease or something on it, and we'll get that back together. What I do need, however, is all the hydraulic ram seals, a couple of O-rings for the shift linkage, and that spacer washer that goes under the prop nut. So I'll go and get or order those, and then we'll start reassembling. Back from Evanrude now, they had quite a bit of the parts in stock, which is good. This old spacer that had disintegrated, I got a new one of those. A couple of new O-rings for the shift linkage to replace these ones. And then just a new gasket for under the plate that those O-rings go into. They did have quite a few of the hydraulic seals, but they were sort of missing some of the parts. And having a chat with them, I think we're much better off just overhauling these hydraulics completely. They're more likely to have other issues internally than just those that bit of corrosion on the seals. So I think we'll get those off and get them pretty much completely overhauled. But I am going to push on with the motor itself because although it will stop it driving on the water particularly well, it won't stop us starting it here on the trailer. I've cleaned out the internal groove where these O-rings go. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, rubber grease onto them and slip them into place. Once they go in, they kind of expand into that groove and they'll sit in place quite nicely. I put this in a vise and straightened it up a bit. Also straightened it along the length as best I could. It's not perfect, but at least it rolls now, as before it wouldn't even do that. Now I'm just gonna put on a wire wheel and clean up some of the corrosion off the outside of it, and we'll start to put it back together. Because the end of this rod's threaded and that'll catch on the O-rings, I'm just going to wind it through until the threaded section's through, then I'll push it down. You can see the threaded section coming through there. And then once we're through, it's good to go. So I'm going to pop this back on, wind this back in five turns, what it was, and pop the new gasket on. Now the shift linkage is threaded in, sort of five, six turns. I've got the new gasket in, and I'll just start bolting down this cover plate. Before I bolt this down though, I'm just gonna put these old bolts on the wire wheel and clean them up a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little double Loctite on each of these threads. Now they're cleaned up just so it doesn't come undone and leak water in here. So gear selector oil seal cover back on, the water pump back on, and I'm pleased to say this uh, shifts quite nicely now. 
So if I just rotate the prop a little bit, I can easily put it in gear both ways, neutral, everything. So that's fixed that problem. So we're getting somewhere. The water pump I'm happy with, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, it's good enough to get it going. Now I'm gonna put the gearbox back on the leg and we'll reconnect the top of the gear selector up here and we'll get close to trying to start it. Cleaned up the splines on the drive shaft with a wire brush and then put a bit of grease on and ready to put it back. Cleaned up the thrust washer a bit on the wire wheel as well. back on, our shiny new spacer, the nut, then our little sort of locking collar, and then I'll grab a new stainless steel split pin to put through that. Gonna bend the short leg over and cut the other longer one off. Trim tab back on. Now let's go and see if we can reconnect that uh, shift linkage. This is the pin here. When we slide this off, this pin comes apart from here. When it comes together, it locks into here. And this shift linkage has an eye in the top of it. So we're going to try to get that pin through that linkage there. So there you can see they're pretty close to lined up. I think I'm going to need two hands to do this unfortunately, but it gives you the idea. Once I've got them lined up, then all I have to do is pull this rod back across towards me to lock it in place. When I was moving this up, this linkage was just hitting against this plate on the carburetor on the galleries here. So I've just taken this off which just gives me enough room to sneak past now. So now I can get it a bit closer. There we go, and it's slotted in. Now I'm gonna put the R clip back in the hole here so that it can't move across and put the cover back on the carburetor. Now after about <coughs> six hours, putting it in forward, puts us in forward in the gearbox. What that means is I can now have a go at turning it over. As I turn the prop, that noise you can hear is the compression escaping out these open uh, spike plug holes. One thing I will say though is be really careful when you're turning an engine over by the prop because if the spark plugs were in, the ignition is on or whatever, you can actually start a motor. And if you're holding the prop when it starts and if it's in gear, you know, I know it's a sort of a slightly far-fetched scenario and it would have to be in gear like that you'd have to have the plugs connected the ignition would have to be on but it can happen so just be really careful that you've got no chance of the motor starting if, if you are ever going to do that now what we're going to look at while we still have a little bit of daylight is what we've got Ooh, it's a bit stiff in the bowls of these carburetors I'll just wind this one out. And that is pure two-stroke oil. And it sure ain't gonna run on that. All right, I'm gonna go and drain all these carburetors and then see if I can pump some fuel through. It's very fresh looking though, it doesn't look five years old or anything, so curious what's going on there. All right, I'll drain them all and I'll get back to you. It's starting to get pretty dark out there as you probably noticed, so I'll talk you through it in here. I, yesterday, I put some fresh fuel in the tank and I also installed a new water separating fuel filter for the owner in this boat. He had previously cleaned the fuel tanks out completely, so I know we got pretty good fuel, well, completely clean fuel, from the tank to the water separating fuel filter. So it's from this point now that I'm gonna start just using the primer bowl with the carburetor bowls open, the drain plugs open, 
and see if we can just get fuel to come through and flush some of that oil out. It's obviously a little bit dark to film now, so I'll have a go at doing that and I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. I'll, I'll film a bit with a torch if I can. As I squeeze it, I'm getting this paler green, which I think is fuel. I can definitely smell it's fuel. And it's uh, flushing that oil through. So I'm just gonna put a pan under this lower cowling and keep pumping it through. All right, that fuel's starting to get much clearer. And now coming out from all six carburetors. So I'm gonna put the drain plugs back in and clean this fuel up. All right, let's make a bit of a mess of the floor and see if we can get this thing to start. It's not sounding too promising, so I'm just gonna check if we've got spark. I'm also gonna rig up my little remote starter so I don't have to keep climbing in and out of the boat. But I'll just go make sure the ignition's on. So now I've got my little remote start button, which is just hooked up to send power to the solenoid. The ignition's on. Now I'm just going to put my spark tester and see if I'm getting anything. So I'm definitely getting spark. So I'm thinking this is related to all that oil that was in the carburetors. I'm kind of hoping not to have to clean six carburetors, but that might be the case so far. I was gonna say let's go into the light, but it's really just into the smoke. I'm gonna let this clear first. I think we'll wrap things up there. It's been a long day working on this boat. It really has taken pretty much all day, amongst other business things, I guess. It's a little bit hard to sum this video up, I guess, because it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. Really what I wanted to go through was the steps for starting a motor up for the first time in a while. And for me, that was just confirming it's not seized, a bit of pre-lubrication in the cylinders, looking for obvious signs of trouble before you just get in there and turn the key just so you don't damage it in any way. Uh, and obviously the more we looked, the more we found that meant it really wasn't in a state to be started. Those of you that work on Evinrude's a bit will probably have noticed that I don't. <laughs> so I did actually do a bit of learning myself, figuring out how that um, gear selector linkage worked. It's relatively straightforward, a little bit fiddly in my opinion, but once you know how to do it, you just you can do it. So if you are looking at working on an Evinrude lower unit, looking at taking the lower unit off, or look at uh, working on that gear selector, then I hope this video sort of helps you specifically with that output. It wasn't the intent, it was more to be a, a general video, but I certainly learned a bit more about Evinrude's, and if you are looking for that information, I hope you get it from this video too. All right, that's enough of me yakking. Time to go home. So I uh, hope you enjoyed. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.